Okie dokie then, born half a time. Entropy changes <coughs> involving iron iodine and iron 2 iodide. Um, and we need to pop all of this into an incomplete Born Harbour cycle. So let's go to our Born Harbour cycle. Um, so you need to, again, it's an in incomplete Born Harbour cycle. So we just got to complete this. So the first one, we always start here. This one is going to be our elements in their standard states. So I'm going to need an iron solid plus I2 solid like so. Um, I then go iron solid, I atomized my iodine there. Um, I've got to atomize my iron now, so that's going to be iron gas, but I haven't done anything to my iodine, so that stays the same. I've now got to get Fe2 plus up here, so I'm going to do my first ionization energy of iron, so that's Fe plus plus an electron, and I haven't done anything to iodine still. Then I get to my iron 2 plus, plus, again, I haven't done anything to iodine, and my two electrons. So this one is going to be my electron affinity of iodine. So I'm going to get my two iodide ions here in the gaseous state. And of course, that is my lattice enthalpy, like so. Uh, right, it then asks me to define lattice enthalpy. Lattice enthalpy is the formation of one mole of an ionic compound from its gaseous ions. And now calculate the lattice enthalpy. So I'm going to do this while I've got, got all of this malarkey up on the board. So delta H lattice is this number here. So um, that is minus 113 minus everything else. But you've got to be careful about times in. This number has to be times by two because I've produced two moles of iodine atoms. Um, and also this number is going to be times by two because it's two electron affinities of iodine. So minus 416 plus two times 107 uh, plus 759 plus 1561 plus 2 times minus 295. So if you do all of that, hopefully you get minus 113 minus 2360, which gives you a grand total of minus 2473 kilojoules per mole. So electropotential time now. Um, we've got a few electropotentials going on here. First of all, nice and easy, complete the electronic configuration, electron configurations of iron 2 plus and bromide. So the first one, um, iron has an atomic number of 26 and bromine has an atomic number of 35. So I've got to obviously use 24 electrons for this boy here because it's the iron 2 plus iron, I've lost two electrons. So 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Remember the 4s2 will go. Those two have gone because it's a 2 plus iron. The 4s go first, so I'm just left with 3d6. Bromide, slightly longer, I've got 36 electrons I've got to deal with because I've added an electron here. So 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, um, 4s2, 4p6. Right, okay, so now we need to predict some feasibility of these reactions. So predict the products of reacting iron separately with iodine, bromine and chlorine and explain your predictions using the um, standard electric potentials above. So, if we go through this, hopefully you will see that I'm reacting with iron, so this one is going to go that way, and these, I'm starting off with these guys here. So, this electrode, <coughs> iron 2 plus to iron, is more negative than all of these three here. 
So these will all go that way to produce iodide, bromide and chloride. That will go the opposite way to produce iron 2 plus and therefore I will make for all of those iron um, 2 iodide, iron 2 bromide and iron 2 chloride. But what will else will happen is that this one here is more negative than these two here. Not for iodine, but for bromide and chloride, and therefore for bromine and chlorine, a further reaction will go because these two will both go that way, and that one there will go um, reversed to produce iron 3 bromide and iron 3 chloride. Okay, so the final part of this one, um, iron 2 plus iron can be used to test for nitrate ions. Um, and then it gives you some information. Um, let's just look at this. So reaction one, in acidic conditions, iron 2 ions reduce nitrate to nitrogen monoxide and iron 2 plus ions are oxidized to iron 3 plus ion and we form water. So it wants me to do reaction one. So if we start off, I have got iron 2 plus reacting with nitrate ions in acidic conditions to make iron 3 plus whoops, plus NO plus water. That's what I've got so far just based on the uh, information they've given me. Now let's look at changing oxidation number. From there to there, I have gone up by one. The oxidation state of nitrogen there is going to be plus five. So going from there to there, there he's going to be plus two. So he's gone down by three. So these have to balance. So I've got to times that by three, which means I have three ions there and three ions there. Okay, now that's all worked out nicely. I've now got to work out how to balance my waters and so on. I've got three oxygens here um, and some acid going on. I've got two there, so I'm going to put a two there. That will now give me my three oxygens there and that just leaves me to have to put four H plus Z to balance out my hydrogens, like so. Uh, the next equation is a lot more easy, uh, a lot more uh, easy. Um, so liquid substitution starts with the iron uh, with six waters, one NO ligand exchange with one water to give me this guy here and H2O, so that's a lot easier.